Hey, what's up guys? JC here, and I want to talk about placing SMA connectors on your antennas. Uh, this could be useful for, uh, say you have store-bought antennas and the end becomes damaged somehow, uh, then this will apply to you, or if you are creating your own antennas, then this will apply to you as well. And the real reason I'm making this video is because I will have a lot more do-it-yourself antenna videos coming up, and instead of explaining how to do this in every single one of those videos, I can just refer you to this one video, and that will cut the time in half on those other videos. So first, let's determine, um, do you want 90 degree like this, or straight? A 90 degree, obviously, is what it sounds like. It's at a 90 degree angle, or you can have a straight. The other thing you need to do is figure out if you need SMA or RP SMA. SMA means that your antenna will have the little pin on the inside. If you guys can see that. Uh, so this is SMA. If your video transmitter has the pin on the inside, then that means you don't need the pin on the connector. So that would be RP SMA, which is reverse polar polarization. And then my last tip is, instead of buying these individually, because people want to charge you two, three, sometimes five dollars each for these, uh, I buy these in packs of ten for, I don't know, ten to thirteen dollars. So the more you buy in a pack, the cheaper they are. Okay, first I will show you the 90 degree, and after that I will show you the straight. Uh, these are going to be a little bit different. So let's take it straight away. With the 90 degree connectors, they already have the pin inside. And if you look in the back side, you'll see a little prong on the inside that's kind of indented in, and that is what's going to hold your signal wire. The signal wire will go inside of that, and then you will have this little white cap that you place on the inside, and then you screw the back side in, and that will press the white cap against this prong, and that will hold the signal wire in place. This is how I determine how much length to cut off my antenna jacket. The end of our signal wire, if you place it like right in the middle, but you might want to go just a little bit further just to be sure, but you don't want to line this up with the end, I guess to give you a better view, um, I would say I place this right about there. And then I line up my razor blade with the end of the connector, and that's where I make my cut. Once I've made my cut all the way around, then I just slice it right down the middle. And that's going to help us pull it off a little bit easier. Okay, there we go. I would now recommend putting heat shrink on the antenna now because it will make your life so much easier. Uh, I'm not going to use heat shrink this time. I will when I, whenever I put the straight uh, SMA connector on. I'm going to take these wires and just pull them back a little bit because we don't need them to be this long. And you'll see uh, what I'm talking about in a second because I actually don't use these crimp sleeves. I solder them to the SMA connector. And once again, there's a reason for that as well. Okay, now that we've got that trimmed back a little bit, I will now. Uh, expose some of the signal wire and I'm going to cut it about the same uh, length as this little you're looking right in the middle I don't know if, if you guys can see that or not but I want it to be the same length because the thing is uh, you don't want the signal wire contacting the outside of the SMA connector you only want it c contacting that middle pin so you don't want it contacting this wall on the outside, that's what I'm trying to say. So if I push this on, I don't know how well you guys can see this, but the signal wire is laying right in the middle of that center pin. And it's not going, it's not contacting this outside wall on this side either. Now I'm going to push these, uh, the ground wires, shielding wires, up onto the uh, little SMA connector right here. If you trim the wires back just right, then it should kind of, you know, be pretty close. It's not too long, not too short. And like I said, I'm not using this little crimping sleeve. The reason for that is because, uh, for one, you can only use them one time. The other thing is they don't hold the antenna on that well. I've had some crashes where the antenna popped off. So what I do is actually solder 
the ground wires onto the SMA connector. Uh, for one, because it's not going to pop off like that crimping sleeve does. The other thing is, uh, I mean, this is reusable. You can once you buy these SMA connectors. I just bought like 20 of them, and then I make 20 antennas. And whenever they become damaged enough. I just uh, hold my soldering iron on and pull it off. I'll actually show you what I'm talking about whenever we take this connector off to put the straight connector on. What I'm doing is just putting a little bit of solder on and keep rotating it and go all the way around. This doesn't look that pretty but once I get solder on I just hold it straight up and down and then I just re-wet the solder and go all the way around and there we go. Next, let this cool off. As it's cooling off, I'm just going to kind of trim up these loose ends. All right, now it's had time to cool off. The next thing is some guys will actually solder the signal wire to that middle pin, but I don't. Uh, two reasons for that. One, it's contacting that pin, and once you place this little white cap in there, and then kind of tap it in place and then you screw this back cover on the cap is pressing against the white cap and then the white cap is pushing against the signal wire so it's not going anywhere plus we have the antenna soldered in place the other reason is because if you do solder it in then whenever you try to reuse this connector it is going to make your life hell and you'll see why in just a second after I remove this brand new connector I just put on it so, all right, so screw the cap on. We are now done. You would now take your heat shrink that you placed on earlier, slide it down, and heat it up, and, uh, you know, it's heat shrink. Pretty simple stuff. All right, now for uh, reusing connectors, and I will also transition into this straight connector. With my homemade antennas, once the antenna becomes so damaged uh, it's no longer usable, all I do is... Uh, just cut the butt off and then redo the top part that way you don't have to continue doing this over and over and over again uh, there's no point you know you might as well reuse all this uh, coax cable don't let it go to waste but after you do this so many times it gets shorter and shorter and shorter until eventually you do have to uh, place new coax cable and you can re reuse the connector so this is very simple just remove the cap take that white part out place this in my helping hands, take my soldering iron and just heat up the solder and pull. Well I'm going to pull and twist. And it slides right off. And you still have a brand new SMA connector that you can reuse. No point in buying another one. Okay now for the straight SMA connector guys. These connectors will not have a pin already in it but it will come with a pin and it will also come with this crimping sleeve which I already said we won't be reusing or using because it's a one-time use deal and they also suck to measure my cut for this one I just uh, line up my coax cable with the end of this hex so right there and then I line up my razor blade right here and make my cut once again, make a cut straight down. This time I will be using heat shrink, so uh, just place your heat shrink on, push it all the way down. I'll pull this back some. Uh, I'm just eyeballing it. I've done this uh, so many times. You want it to be about that far, and then you can trim it off. The depth of this pin stops at about halfway, so that's how much of the uh, signal jacket you want to cut off about half the length of this barrel right here the signal wire I'm going to get it as straight as possible and then I'm going to tin the signal wire it doesn't take much solder at all I place the pin in my helping hands and now I'm going to line up the signal wire with the end of it and it looks like we need more solder another way of doing this is you can just place a little bit of solder in the uh, top of your pen and just let it fall down. So now let's try this again. Line it up, heat it up, 
and it's just going to slide right in place. Now take the straight connector and slide it on. And you want to push this on all the way until, see how it's almost level, well actually it is level with the this outer ring. You want it to be level with that. Once the pin is level with this outside ring, then you know you have it pushed on all the way. And just like before with the 90 degree, we're going to put a good amount of solder on it. And then rotate, put some more on it, and just keep doing that. Once you're solder on it, just like before, I'm going to hold it straight up and down and then just reheat it and smooth it out. Then it will look nice and pretty like that. Let this cool off before you put the heat shrink on because it's probably so hot if you put your heat shrink on now, it's going to melt holes in your heat shrink. And then once it's cooled off, I'll just put my heat shrink on and heat it up. And that's it guys, it's that simple. So uh, if you enjoy this video, could you please give me a like? Look in the description below for links to other videos, uh, especially ones where I show you how you make your own antennas on the super cheap. Thanks for watching, and I will see you again soon.